Hello everybody. Welcome to the Advanced Calculus Mini Lecture on the Multivariable Chain Rule. Remember that the Calculus 1 Chain Rule is about the derivative of composed functions. The same now, except that at least one of the functions is not a single variable function. We can only compose two functions g and f, apply g first and then apply f to the output of g, if the number of output values of g equals the number of input values of f. So we have g from n-dimensional space to m-dimensional space, f from m-dimensional space to k-dimensional space, and the composed function f circle g has n input values and k output values. If n, m and k are all equal to 1, we have the classical calculus 1 situation. Here we assume that at least one of m, n and k is larger than 1. We consider the following three situations. Version 1, n equals 1, m larger than 1, k equals 1, version 2, n larger than 1 and k equals 1, and version 3, k larger than 1. Ok, let's start with version 1. For simplicity we only consider the case m equals 2. Of course, higher m's can be treated similarly. The function g has one input t and two outputs, x of t and y of t, in other words, it is a parametrized curve in the plane. x of t and y of t are our coordinates at time t. Take this as an example, where x of t equals t minus 1 and y of t equals square root of t over 2, for t between 0 and 2. The multivariable function f has two input values and one output value, c equals f of x, y. Its graph defines a surface, like in this example for f of x and y equals 1 minus x squared over 2 minus y squared over 2. Next assume that we are not moving on the parametrized curve in the xy plane, but rather in three dimensions on the surface above that curve. We are lifting the curve on the surface. That means that when we are at x and y coordinates x0 and y0, we are at a height of c equals f of x0, y0. The composed function f circle g, defined by f circle g of t, is f of g of t, expresses our height in terms of time. It is an ordinary calculus 1 function with one input t and one output f of g of t equals f of x of t, y of t. The chain rule gives a formula for the derivative of this composed function. Its meaning is a rate of height gain over time when moving on the curve. According to chain rule, this derivative of the composed function can be expressed in terms of the partial derivatives of f with respect to x and y, and the derivatives of x and y with respect to t as follows. The derivative of the composed function with respect to t equals the product of the partial derivative of f with respect to x and the derivative of x with respect to t plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times dy over dt. Let me give another version of the formula using the gradient of f, which is a vector having the partial derivatives of f as components, and the scalar product. The derivative of the composed function is a scalar product of the gradient of f and the vector consisting of dx over dt, comma dy over dt. Why are the formulas true? Remember that the gradient vector points towards the direction where one gains the most height and that its magnitude is the maximum height gain per unit when moving one unit in the xy plane. The black arrows show a few gradient vectors in our example when we look at the graph from above. And for the parametric curve g, the vector dx over the t and dy over the t is a velocity vector when moving on the curve. Three examples are also shown as colored arrows. Remember that the scalar product of two vectors is the product of the two magnitudes times the cosine of the angle. This cosine is positive at the first point, shown, so the product of the two vectors is positive, we gain height, the angle is 90 degrees at the second point, so the cosine is zero and we neither gain or lose height at this point. 
Finally, the cosine is negative at the third point, we lose height there. And of course, the higher the magnitudes of the two vectors, the higher the magnitude of the gradient and the magnitude of the velocity of the point, the higher the result. So the formula seems to be plausible. But the formula is not just plausible, it is even true. Do you remember that the directional derivative of a multivariable function f in the direction of a vector v equals the scalar product of the gradient of f and the vector v? The directional derivative is about the height gain if you move along the vector. Now in one second we move about dx over the t, dy over the t, the velocity vector, along the curve of g. Moving in this direction, but on the surface of f, we then gain gradient of f times velocity vector on height. That's approximately the meaning of the second formula. In our example, we have g of t equals t minus 1, comma, square root of t over 2 for t between 0 and 2, and f of x, comma, y equals 1 minus x squared over 2 minus y squared over 2. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x equals negative 2x divided by 2, which is negative x, and the partial derivative of f with respect to y is negative 2y divided by 2, which is negative y. And the derivatives of x and y are dx over dt equals 1 and dy over dt equals 1 over 2 times square root of t over 2 times 1 half, using chain rule for one dimension here. And therefore, the derivative of f circle g equals negative x times 1 plus negative y times 1 over 2 times square root of two over two, uh, t over 2 times 1 half. When we simplify and replace x of t by t minus 1 and y of t by square root of t over 2, we get the derivative of f circle g equals negative t plus 1 minus square root of t over 2 times 1 over 4 times square root of t over 2, which is just negative t plus 1 minus 1 fourth, which is negative t plus 3 over 4. All this could have been derived directly without the chain rule formula above. All we would need to do is to substitute x and y in the definition of f by the functions x of t and y of t. We get f of g of t equals 1 minus t minus 1 squared over 2 minus square root of t over 2 squared over 2, which is just by foiling 1 minus t squared minus t2 plus 1 over 2, and for the other part we get minus t over 2 over 2, since of course the square of a square root is just the part inside. So we get negative 2t squared plus 3t plus 2, all divided by 4. This function can be differentiated quite easily. We get the derivative to be negative 4t plus 3 over 4, which is negative t plus 3 over 4, the same as above. So, what's the point of multivariable chain rule, you may ask, if you can differentiate the composed function also directly? The point is that both the method of implicit differentiation and also the method for related rates follow from the multivariable chain rule. Let's now discuss version 2 of the chain rule, where the function g has more than one input value. For simplicity, we only discuss the cases n equals m equals 2. Other values work similar. Let the two components of g be g1 and g2, so g of x, y equals g1 of x, y, g2 of x, y. We also have f from r2 to r, and the composed function is f circle g from r2 to r. Now both g and the composed function have two independent variables, so we are asking for partial derivatives. We obtain the two chain rule formulas by replacing the ordinary derivatives of the composed function in g by the partial derivatives of the composed function in g. And we get these two formulas here. Notice that they are exactly the same as in the previous case, except that the ordinary derivatives of f circle g and g are replaced by the partial derivatives. If we let f be a vector-valued multivariable function, 
then we get even more equations. Again, for simplicity, let's say that k equals 2 and that f has two components, f1 and f2. Then the previous two partial derivative formulas are true for both f1 and f2, so we have four formulas like this. Thanks for your attention.